So in many ways, the most reliable instruments we have are the instruments on the surface of the Earth. And, and they're the only ones that give us a long-term temperature record that goes back before 1979 or so. Um, and even uh, Carl Mears, who's the, the head of the RSS group, the, the group who created the graph that, uh, or who created the data that then was turned into the graph that Ted Cruz used to point out that there was no warming in the satellites. Uh, Carl Mears says that the surface record, in his opinion, is more reliable than the satellite record. Um, and we've done a lot of work with the surface record to ensure that reliability. We've tried using just the raw data globally. You get pretty much the same warming. We've tried using various adjustments to correct for instrument moves, uh, time of observation changes, ship buoy transitions, things like that. Uh, we've tried cutting it into different slices, using only urban stations, using only rural stations, using only stations that are long and rural uh, for different definitions of urbanity. And pretty much no matter how you slice up the global surface temperature record, you pretty much get the same result. Um, and the fact that so many independent groups using uh, different data sets have found the same results is encouraging and it suggests that you know the warming we're seeing is not an artifact of any biases in the data. Um, it's also worth pointing out that the adjustments to the surface temperature data that get so much press have very little impact over on temperatures in the last 30 years or so. Uh, it's almost entirely on the distant past and even then the net impact of these adjustments globally is to increase not decrease the amount of warming or sorry the net impacts of these adjustments globally is to decrease, not increase, the amount of warming we've seen over the last century, uh, in part because the biggest adjustments that are done are actually to ocean data. And those adjustments to ocean data raise past ocean temperatures, so you end up having less overall warming over the century. So in the Carl et al. paper, they transitioned from the old ERSST version 3, so ERSST is an extended reconstruction sea surface temperature, to version 4. And the big changes they made in this transition, in uh, the new record, were uh, an adjustment for the fact that buoys tend to measure temperatures colder than engine intake valves. Um, it makes sense. Engine rooms of ships tend to be a little bit warm. Uh, and when you run water through them to measure the temperature, it ends up warming up the water. Whereas the buoys sit directly in the water, and, and therefore the temperature is a little bit cooler. Uh, they also use nighttime marine air temperature measurements uh, on ships to better calibrate the difference in offsets between ships. So each ship that's measuring temperature is going to have a slightly different configuration of their engine room intake valve, and that's going to lead to a slightly different offset in the temperature measurements. And so this nighttime marine air temperature provides a good way to calibrate those differences. So those are the two big adjustments they made. Uh, the net effect of those adjustments was to slightly increase uh, the rate of warming over the last 10 years very slightly. The only reason it gets all this play is because we're focusing on such a short period of time that small adjustments can have big effects on very short-term trends. Um, and so those are the adjustments they made. Recently, uh, I actually did some work with uh, Kevin Counton to try to assess the extent to which these adjustments show up in other independent data sets. Uh, so what we did actually was to use only buoy data. So since 1995 or so, there's enough buoy data in the ocean to, to construct a pretty good sea surface temperature record from only buoys. And the nice thing about buoys is they're instruments that are purposely built just for sea surface te temperature measurement. Uh, there's a lot of similarity across different buoys. There's very little differences in instrumentation, uh, which means that the record is, is what's termed homogenous. It, it doesn't have a lot of changes between instruments uh, versus you know, ships, which are, vary a lot between different ships. And what we did is we compared this record generated using only buoys to the old NOAA record, which uses ships and buoys, and the new NOAA record, which uses ships and buoys, but has an adjustment. And it turns out that the old NOAA record doesn't agree very well with only using buoys. Um, it's much colder in recent years. Whereas the new NOAA record that's adjusted for this ship buoy transition agrees almost perfectly with a buoy only record, which strongly suggests that the new NOAA record is doing a good job at uh, effectively removing a bias introduced by the ship to buoy transition. We also looked at some other data sets, uh, a data set called Argo, which are uh, a special set of buoys that aren't included in the normal buoy data set. Uh, these buoys dive down deep into the ocean, they go up slowly, and they measure temperature at different levels, and they also take the temperature at the surface. Um, Argo has pretty good coverage of the ocean since 2005 or so, and since 2005 an Argo uh, only record agrees quite well with the new NOAA record, uh, but the old NOAA record is warming uh, less quickly than an Argo, uh, than the record created with the Argo float. So Argo, uh, a buoy-only record, there's a number of independent uh, tests that can help verify that the new sea surface temperature record produced by NOAA is uh, 
doing a good job at adjusting for these shit buoy biases and not introducing any new bias into the record.